conversation about this new law, which is meant to modernize the way that our health system and human health at the mental level. Today's big hard fact is that the Mental Health Act replaces the Colonial Era Lunacy Act. And like I said, we talked about this law last Friday on Eyes and Nays, also the Friday before that. Uh, Eyes and Nays is a segment where we talk about legislative, uh, talk about the legislative branch and everything that happens in the legislative branch. Uh, my guests talked a lot about the changes between the Lunacy Act and the Mental Health Act. And that got them talking about the state of mental health care in Nigeria in general. Last week, I didn't have our psychiatrist who joined us the first time we had the conversation. We did, however, have a few calls coming to the show, strongly disagreeing with some of the points that uh, one of our guests uh, on Friday made. Let me play that call for you. Hello, Sandra. Thank, thank you for calling. Welcome. Yeah, good, good, good afternoon. Good afternoon. What's your name, ma'am? Yeah, um, this is Dr. Ikoni. Welcome, doctor. Yes, um, I've been listening to your show, mm -hmm. and I, I, I need to correct a lot of things. Okay. So I hope you would allow me some few minutes. Yes, to... please, go ahead, please, go ahead. Now, you see, the mental health bill, or the law now, mm. is a very fantastic thing. Okay. And um, your... Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, your guest has been talking, and she's, she's been talking as if most of the abuses that mentally ill patients have been um, subjected to mm. have been done to them at the psychiatric hospitals. Okay. And this is, this is a lie. Okay. You see, most of, the lie, uh, most of the abuses have been done by people who are not professionals. And I'm talking about maybe traditional um, faith homes, mm -hmm. uh, people that call themselves therapists mm -hmm. that are not even licensed to practice mental health. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. these, these are the places where the abuses usually take place. If you, I, I, see, I work in a psychiatric hospital mm -hmm. and we don't abuse patients there. Okay. She also mentioned one thing. She talked about ECT. Mm -hmm. ECT is still a very fantastic treatment and we still use it till tomorrow. Okay. Researchers have proven that ECT is very good and it has saved a lot of lives. Okay. And I give you an example. For example, if somebody has severe depression mm. and the person is suicidal, you give ECT, the person comes out of it. Please, no please tell me what so ECT, ECT is. is. So, what is ECT? Tell me what ECT is. What is okay. it? ECT, ECT is called, um, it's an electroconvulsive therapy whereby you you, you administer a, a, like a shock therapy. You know, you, you administer um, um, like a small all those of electricity to somebody's brain and this is to you know change some of the chemicals in the brain now the thing is that before we give ECT to anybody mm -hmm. we explain to the patient if the patient is in the best position to understand if the patient does not have the capacity at that time to understand mm -hmm. we explain to the relatives and they give us informed consent. We just don't grab patients and just apply ECT on them. No. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, mm -hmm. there is no treatment without side effect. Even if you go for a surgical operation, mm -hmm. you are going to give an informed consent. And if you cannot give it, maybe you are not in that capacity, mm -hmm. your, your, your next of kin will do that. And I tell you, even the anesthesia, anesthesia has side effects. Mm -hmm. So there is also, no, you see, she, she should be talking and, 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 and uh, portraying ECT as a bad thing. Mm. See, you see, it is a very fantastic treatment and researchers have shown that it is very, very good and we still do. So see, mm. I know that she is a mental health enthusiast, but mm. she's not an expert and she should not talk as one. Then number, number three, a bit, uh, my, my third point right now. We're, we're, we're out of time. Unfortunately, unfortunately, we're out of time. And I promised Howard, my guest, that I would give her a chance to reply. And so today, I'm glad to say that they are both back. My first guest uh, is a mental health activist. She is the executive director, She Writes Woman. Uh, Hawa Ojefo, welcome back to Hard Facts. Thank you so much, Sandra. I'm glad to be back. My second guest is the chief consultant psychiatrist at the Federal uh, Neuropsychiatric Hospital, Aro Abiokuta, Dr. Kike Oyakomi. Good to have you on the show. Good evening. Good evening, Sandra. I'm 
glad to be here again. Again, yes. <laughs> okay, Lagos, you can also be a part of the conversation. What questions do you have about the Mental Health Act, about mental health care delivery in Nigeria? Do you or your loved ones have experience with the system? Women call us on 01465-7190. Men call us on 0700-993-993-993. How are, before we have a wider conversation, I promised you a chance to reply to Dr. Yekomi's points. So please go ahead. Hawa? Oh, doesn't look like we have Hawa still on the call. Okay. Well, um, while we um, hope that we can have Hawa join us back on the call, let me come back to Dr. Yekomi. Uh, on your call on Friday, you said that the new Mental Health Act has a lot of good provisions. Yep. In your opinion, I, I want to find out, what are some of the specific provisions of the Act that makes it easier for hospitals, providers, communities to provide um, better for the mentally ill? Very good. I like to talk about mental health. I, I mean, that's my profession, and I'm so, so crazy about it. Because mm -hmm. uh, mental health is a domain of medicine that has suffered so much. It is um, highly misunderstood. Mental health um, conditions are highly stigmatized and it is because people don't understand some basic fundamental, some, some basic facts. Mm. And let me start with this, right? Now, the delivery of healthcare everywhere, including Nigeria, is always based on a model. Now, the delivery of healthcare, I mean, talking about the other aspects of health, aside mental health, is based on a public health model. And what does this model say? You know, because you cannot, you, you deliver something based on your ideas, right? Mm. And because medicine has grown over the years, um, centuries back, there were so many, many practices based on their understanding at, 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 at the those time. Parts, yes. Mm -hmm. So, but now, um, contemporary medical practice recognizes some things. So the present model is that the delivery or the health care given to people should be based on the population at large, not only on the ill. Mm. So it is not only on the traditional areas of diagnosis and treatment. Mm. Rather, it is on epidemiological surveillance, mm -hmm. on health promotion, mm -hmm. on disease prevention, mm -hmm. on access to quality health care, mm -hmm and evaluation of those healthcare. Hmm. Are you, do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So we are not only focusing on, oh, the patient comes to the hospital and you give drugs and the patients go home. Mm -hmm. Now, let me just furnish <coughs> a, a background. Let me just furnish a background for people to understand where we're coming from. Because if you don't understand where we're coming from, you won't understand the present theme. Mm -hmm. um, centuries back, as, um, two centuries back, as, um, specifically in the 19th century, mm -hmm. a man called Louis Pasteur discovered that microorganisms called germs cause disease. And at that time, the delivery of healthcare was now based on that finding at that time. Mm. So the delivery of healthcare was based on one germ, one disease, one treatment theory. Mm. But as knowledge in medicine increased, increased mm -hmm. we now got to know that the, 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 the factors that cause ill health mm -hmm. are multifactorial. Okay. They are not only just one. Even in the cases where you know the, 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 the causative agent, there are still other factors. So researchers began to show that there are some other factors that also would contribute to one's health and illness. And these factors would include things outside of, the, of that person. Mm -hmm. So now the delivery of healthcare is based on a biopsychosocial model, meaning that it is based on biological factors, mm -hmm. psychological factors, and social factors. Mm. Now, unfortunately, unfortunately, because the knowledge in mental in the mental health field mm -hmm. was not as rapid, you know, in the evolution as in the uh, in the other as areas other, of, as other, of of, of mm -hmm. uh, medicine. Mm -hmm. It did not apply to mental health care. And in fact, that Lunacy Act, the, it, it, was, it was signed into law in 1958 mm -hmm. after it, had, it, it was an ordinance since 1908 um, or something, or 1916. Yes, 1916, two years after the amalgamation of Nigeria. So it, 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 since then, we have been using this Lunacy Act. And that lunacy comes from the 
idea at that time that mental illnesses were caused by agents outside of the human body, agents uh, 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 like demons and spirits and also phenomena like magnetic fields and the movement of the moon and the star. And the Latin, is it the Latin or the Greek word for moon is luna. Mm -hmm. So that is why those at that, at that time, people who had mental illnesses were referred to as lunatics, mm -hmm. meaning, you know, in allusion to the fact that, okay, they were caused, the illnesses were caused by movement of the moon. Mm -hmm. And that carried on for a very long time. However, in Nigeria, because, you know, Nigeria is every, uh, always slow to, you know, I mean, doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. But in other countries where, you know, there had been advances in the knowledge, they had, you know, corrected all this and, and, and everything. Mm -hmm. And that in that lunacy act, too. The focus was not on, th on this biopsychosocial mod model of the delivery of healthcare. Mm -hmm. It was based on the knowledge at that time. And then the treatment was only custodial, meaning mm -hmm. that the treatment was not focused on rehabilitating the patient. Mm -hmm. The treatment was not focused on whether the patient was going to be functional again. Mm -hmm. The patient, the treatment was only, oh, let us take away these patients because they are constituting From the rest new of science, yes, to, mm -hmm. to the environment. Mm -hmm. And so at that time, they would take away all these patients and put them in places where they called asylum. Mm -hmm. So at, the, at, the, at, at those places, they were subjected to inhumane treatments. Mm -hmm. Some of them were flogged. Some of them were, 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 were starved with the belief that, oh, if you flog their bodies, if you, if you starve them, the demons, the, the, the demons would evacuate that, uh, those bodies. Mm -hmm. But as treatment, uh, uh, as, as knowledge evolved, mm -hmm. and people began to realize that, no, no, um, demons and spirits and the moon and the stars don't cause mental illnesses. They are caused by this, this. They are caused by so many factors, mm -hmm. you know. So the movement began. Mm -hmm. And then in those advanced countries, they began to shift away from this lunacy arc, mm -hmm. you know. But unfortunately, Nigeria still sustained. They are still present. Mm -hmm. And then this present mental health um, law mm -hmm. was first um, proposed 20 years back right. by two doctors in the in the in the in the um in the senate um, one of them is late dr martin Zielu, a neuropsychiatrist and the second of them was dr um Dal dalatu da tafida he was indeed the, even the personal physician to late show shagari they were the there was the first two that actually started this journey. Mm. And we've been on this journey up till now. And we are glad that, yes, we have, you know, gotten you're, here. We're finally here. Yes, we're finally here. So what is this uh, mental health bill going, going to do? It has finally situated mental health care on the same pedestal with the rest with the, the with the with the, the with the rest of of um of um, of healthcare of, of healthcare thank you with the, with the other domains mm -hmm. so we are we have moved from that obsolete state wherein mental um, illnesses were viewed as supernatural superstitious caused by moon stars demons and spirit so now there is going to be a national movement it, it's now going to be in 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 um, our national consciousness that mental illnesses are legitimate biological illnesses mm -hmm. right and their delivery is going to be based on that biopsychosocial model we, and that means that we know that yes the cause the, the the cause of mental illnesses are multifactorial mm -hmm. including biological factors psychological factors and social factors mm -hmm. and, and social factors mm -hmm. and that's why when you check the bill there's so much emphasis on psychosocial right. factors community treatment that's right. and this is not to say that the traditional psychiatric hospitals will be phased out or they are not going to be existent or they have been bad. And in fact, we have been doing this biopsychosocial treatment for a very long time. I, t I told you that this journey did not just start now. Although, you know, a lot of mental health um, enthusiast activists jumped on it and everything, but most of them don't even know where we started, mm. you know. So in the hospitals, it is not only doctors that take care of the mentally ill. We have psychologists, clinical psychologists, we have occupational therapists. Occupational therapists ensure that the person is functional. So even in the hospital, they treat, they, if, if you don't have any skill, maybe you're not a graduate or you don't have any skill or you're a graduate and you still, you, you don't want to function as you were before, mm -hmm. they can teach you skills like tailoring, babbing, anything that you want. Mm -hmm. I'm, not talk, I'm not saying that that is what applies to everyone. I'm mm -hmm. talking about um, uh, patients that did not have any skill prior to their illness. Right. So we have social works department. We have so many nutrition. We have so, it's an all-encompassing multidisciplinary treatment. 
Right. And you see, when we admit patients, we don't admit any, every patient. We advocate community care. We, 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 we say that, oh, don't wait until your illness advances to a state that it cannot be managed at home. And I give an example. Malaria. For majority of persons that have malaria, you don't even need to come to the hospital. Mm-hmm. You take your medicine and you are, you are okay at home. Mm-hmm. That is a form of community treatment, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And then when we talk about psychosocial management, we are talking about all the social environment because we know that it is not when only you say social environment what do you mean yes yes i'm going to explain we know that it's not only the psychological experiences that determine your state of health mm-hmm. it also includes the dynamics between your psychological experiences and your social experiences which include things like your relationship yeah, like your neighborhood your workplace your culture your social values pol- policies um, political values and i give an example of you know for example you work here in Nigeria Info. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if I want to talk about the psychosocial factors that can impact your mental health, I'll be talking about like your workload, your work pace, your work schedule, your organization um, structure, um, your your home work interface, your 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 communication culture in this in this establishment because these are the psychosocial factors that would impact your mental health. Mm. And that and then in that bill, section section four E also talked about preventing mental illnesses in the first place. So it brings me back to that model that I talked about, mm-hmm. that we are the delivery of healthcare. We have moved away from the traditional area of diagnosis and treatment. Mm-hmm. We are also about preventive. And that provision, that um, uh, law also makes provision for that in Section 4E. And it talks about coming up with, that the committee mm-hmm. will come up with programs, with ideas, mm-hmm. you know, with policies that would promote mental health, that will prevent mental illnesses or in the first instances Mm -hmm. and this will mean you know educating people about their mental health letting them to know mental early mental health um, um, symptoms and even identifying populations that are at risk Mm. including things like maybe out of school children um, um, people that have experienced um, catastrophes and disasters people like um, the ones in the IDP camps Mm -hmm. um, uh, people that have experienced trauma you know people that have experienced one 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 form of trauma or the other Mm. so the bill is an all-encompassing thing it is now, you know, on, on, on the same pedestal like every other aspect of health, health, health care delivery. delivery. Yes. Okay. So it's not about, oh, you just, oh, you, 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 you take a patient, you just throw the patient into the custody mm-hmm. of the, of the, of the hospital of like the hospital. it was done before. Right. Now, yeah. No. So now the, our aim is to treat the patient. So assuming a patient comes in for um, with depression or schizophrenia or drug um, addiction, we just don't focus on getting reading the, the patient of symptoms. We don't say, oh, b- because the patient is no more hallucinating or the patient is no more deluded, now go home. We are concerned about rehabilitating that patient into the society. Reintegrating. Yes, uh, uh, sorry, reintegrating, you know. So that is where the other aspect, the other um, 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 disciplines come into play. Mm-hmm. Sometimes social workers would need to go to the patient's houses to check out some things. Sometimes we, we need to go to the to, to, to the patient's place of work, you know, to sort out some things. So we do a lot. And these are the things that we have been doing for a very long time. So this law is a very, very welcome thing. And we are so, so, so glad about it. Okay. Lagos, if you just tuned in, you are listening to the voice of the chief consultant psychiatrist at the Federal Neuropsychiatric Hospital, Aro Abiokota, Dr. Kike Oye coming. We've got uh, Hawa J4 back. Hawa is a mental health uh, a mental health activist. She's also the executive director at She Writes Woman. Hawa, um, we started the show by requesting your reply from how we ended on Friday. Um, do you have thoughts? Do you want to share those thoughts? Yeah, of course. Thank you so much, Sandra. Yeah. Um, I think first things first, it's important to backtrack a little bit. We're on the third part of this conversation. Mm -hmm. In the first part of this conversation, I had said very clearly that um, I had stated a couple of disclaimers. The first being that I'm commenting not on the actual gazetted law, Mm -hmm. uh, because that has not been made public yet. And so I'm commenting on the bill Mm -hmm. that I contested on the floor of the National Assembly in February of 2020. And then our last episode was really about the Lunacy Act, mm-hmm. pretty much. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that was the basis of the conversation. Now, my response to Dr. Oyekomi, um, hopefully she's hearing me, nice to meet you, ma'am, nice is that when you say it is not a lie, 
<laughs> you say that it's, it's, a, it's a lie that mental health practitioners are not abusing people. I'd like to respectfully disagree that it is not a lie that mental health practitioners are major players in the abusers of people with mental health conditions. Um, there have been studies, and I don't know if we can take our minds back to when Human Rights Watch released the report um, around after their research across eight states in Nigeria, um, as, as well as you know, traditional healing camps, state-owned facilities, um, religious centers, and things like that. Hmm. Part of their supporters in doing on-the-ground work, we supported them on the ground as a rights woman, but also we had psychiatrists who also supported them in documenting incidences of abuses in state-owned facilities. And by state-owned facilities, I'm talking predominantly psychiatric um, facilities and also, you know, other, you know, teaching hospitals and, you know, things like that. Hmm. Um, so there were actual documentations of shackling, chaining, um, forced treatment, involuntary detention, lack of informed consent in many of these facilities. So that's just something I want to put there. Hmm. If we also recall, there was a time that I, I, I believe, and I could be wrong, it was BBC that released something with regards to, um, that sort of like broke the story, even before the research was even done, mm -hmm. um, kind of broke the story that caused there to be some level of shake up around the presidency level because Human Rights Watch together with partners on the ground have been writing to the president with regards to um, getting an executive order um, for the banning of shackling and chaining and other inhuman treatments of people with mental health conditions. So that's the what, number one thing. Hmm. As a matter of fact, that is factually incorrect that mental health practitioners are not, you know, key participants in the abuses of people. Just because, you know, um, something is not happening in one facility where you work does not mean it's not happening at all. So it, it is, I do not think that it is actually accurate to, use to say, oh, I work in a mental health facility, it doesn't happen. And so that is representative of all the places where mental health facilities, are, um, where mental health um, care is being taken, is taking place in terms of like state-owned facilities and things like that. Is it happening in traditional healing camps? Absolutely. Is it happening in religious centers? Absolutely. Is it happening in psychiatric hospitals? Absolutely. It is happening as well. Because what I'm hearing is, Oh, yes, we abuse, but we don't abuse like traditional healing centers. And I think that's just really low because we can talk about abuses and we can talk about it across the board. Right now, in that particular conversation we were having in the last episode, we were talking about state-owned facilities and psychiatric facilities as that's well. Right. And so that was why it was important for me to highlight the fact that these abuses actually take place there. Now, when it came to the conversation around ECT, and, you know, we started with the conversation of sterilization, can, can and we're I, talking about I, forced can, treatments can, and things like can that. I, can I pause you there? I, I, I have to take a very quick okay. break, but when we come back, you keep okay. making this point you're making about sterilization, which is probably where uh, Dr. Yekomi tuned in, where we're talking about this act, mm -hmm. outrightly banned sterilization. Lagos, if you just tuned in, I'm Sandra Ezekwesile. This is Hard Facts on 99.3 Nigeria Info. Let's take a break state in town that everyone is talking about and by the time i'm done telling you about it you should get yourself and your family a space on this estate that everyone is talking about so you can be living in an it's alexander Rado! <laughs> <laughs> liverpool are majestic you can't call chickens City have to defend for six minutes. They do not want to attack this. Felon Mendy across into the penalty area, headed down by the Madrid players. Still Madrid hopping around City's penalty box. A chance could come for them. It's 1 1 on the night. It's 4 5 for Nagy. Gets the head it up. It's a one. 2 2. <laughs> two. Wow. They are back. Incredible. Well, one of the great nights um, as a radio football commentator, certainly. Uh, it was special, it was special. You could sense it, I like, literally could sense um, a potential comeback and it wasn't a surprise that it happened, but you know, how I was still able to articulate my words after that goal came in, uh, something magical. So, one of those great minds. Thanks, Alexander Rado! <laughs> <laughs> Liverpool are majestic! You can't coach against this! I'm a soccer for trends. You know, if he wasn't a Liverpool player, I would wear a jersey with Trent at the back. Um, that was special. It was a free kick from about 38, 40 yards against Chelsea, a team I you know, somehow didn't fancy. Um, it was special and I fell off the seat. It's a classic. I don't think any commentator has been able to do that. Every day is a new experience for me here. 
And I get, I mean, look, see how excited I was coming into this studio. It was like a kid in a candy shop. What I enjoy doing the most here, let me put it in my own words, is dear Bumi, because it's relaxing, it's hilarious. Um, and of course, I, I, for the life of me, I would never miss um, doing programs with Sheriff in the morning. It's one of the best, that's what keeps me uh, alive and going. I think the one that I would remember the most, uh, believe you me, is the one I did with Made Kuti, uh, Femi's son. Um, every time I looked at, you know, every time I think of the young guy, I feel so inspired. Because I'm always thinking of tomorrow. I'm youth driven. I'm not saying I'm a youth, -o, <laughs> but I'm youth driven. Oh, the best thing about being a radio show host is when people hold your hand in public, they pray for you, they send you message what you're doing. Because it's apart from it being I'm not going to be a liar. I'm I'm somebody who and the reason why I'm, why I don't lie about such things is I don't want to be caught out. Okay, so if I overslept, you hear me on radio saying, sorry I came late, I overslept. I don't want anybody telling me that this is what happened. You know, I'm very conscious of that. So I don't think I ever lied not to be on air. I would have called ahead to say, uh, because I'm a professional to the core, and you can ask those who work with me. If I can't make it, sometimes I'd call Sheriff in the morning and say, Sheriff, oh, let me. I'm tired. If I'm tired, I'm tired, you know. So I don't think I've been caught out as such. I can't remember any time. <laughs> All we need is something to push our limits. Reactor Energy Drink. What you need to push your limits. Ever since 5G came into my life, I've been on cloud nine. I get to take my classes online in real time and upload my videos before you say Jack Robinson. <laughs> Even Babe isn't left out. Our long distance is waxing strong. Hello, hello, babe. Can you hear me? Ah, your video is frozen. I came. <laughs> we don't do that here because life is a breeze. Experience the wonders of MTN 5G. Hyperfast internet connection with no buffering, zero lag, and quality data capabilities like never seen before. No Pichuju, not MTN 5G. Now available on iPhone. MTN, what are we doing today? Some people say tech as, some people say tech as the new crude oil. And others say tech is in the future. With ALX, tech is here and here to stay. ALX is your career accelerator built to give you in-demand global tech skills and access to a community that provides lifelong learning, lifelong networks. Register on www.alxafrica.com as the programs are fully funded for a limited period. Unlock possibilities with ALX. Everyone is at the table for lunch. Mom is bringing in the jello fries and then... John! Sorry, Mom. Hello, can I order some jello fries to be delivered? Mama saves the day. Lunch is here. Mom, I got some coke too. Just come and eat, Joe. <laughs> Cook up memorable moments because family lunch and an ice cold coke make a recipe for wonder. Coca-Cola, real wonder. Thanks for calling Bastion Since HMO. Since I signed up with Bastion HMO, I don't worry about hospital bills. I get access to top quality health care and still save enough for other things. They even help me prepook my doctor's appointments. Bastion HMO also gives me access to over 1,700 hospitals and clinics with the freedom to switch whenever. I feel so in control of my finances and health. Call 0800 Bastion or visit www.bastionhmo.com to purchase a plan that suits your needs. Bastion Health, the HMO that puts you in control. My people leave that time once again. How my chance here again? So my people don't stop. You got to take good care of your skin. Got to check on your skin so it's not like sandpaper. Make sure you rub your hands, rub your hands, oh yeah. Make sure you rub your legs and your face, oh yeah. Thanks to Vaseline, everything's so smooth. Vaseline. Vaseline Petroleum Jelly shields you from the harsh effects of hammer tan. 
created to lock in moisture. Vaseline keeps your skin smooth, soft, and protected. So soft, I Vaseline. 99.3 Nigeria Info, your number one station for talk. Let's talk. I'm Sandra Ezekwesili. You're listening to Hard Facts on 99.3 Nigeria Info. How will the Mental Health Act impact treatment of mental health conditions? I've got two guests on the show with me today. Hawa Ojefo is a mental health um, activist. She's also uh, the executive director at She Writes Woman. I have as well the chief consultant psychiatrist at the Federal Neuropsychiatric Hospital, Aro uh, Biokuta, Dr. Kike Oyekomi. And um, they've both been sharing their thoughts on the new Mental Health Act. Uh, Hawa, you were going to address um, the final point about um, sterilization because we moved the conversation into some of the abuses that happen at the different facilities where people with mental health conditions try to get care and um, how I was going to talk to us about um, sterilization um, that this new act bans uh, just before the break. How I go ahead. Thank you very much. So yes, I was just picking up from our conversation last week where we did talk about sterilization right. and we were trying to unpack it and that's when the conversation around ECT also came. Right. And what I specifically talked about was cases that were documented by organization in partnership with the media organization right. of people that were subjected to ECT without, you know, informed consent. Right. And perhaps, you know, doctors would say, okay, perhaps maybe their family members were sought in the process. But recall that when we spoke about it the first time we had this conversation, two episodes ago, mm -hmm. I had talked about how the right respecting approach is a supported decision making approach where nobody makes the decision as a proxy, but we always make decisions with the person involved as opposed to, you know, yielding that sort of decision making to somebody else. Mm. And so that is definitely something I want to highlight. Mm. And it is not, and I did mention that ECT carried out in other countries. I did not say that it is only in Nigeria. And so that makes it yes, really horrible do. and mm. things like that. Mm. So I just wanted to also correct that as well. You know, um, are there issues as psychiatric don't sound good for people? Absolutely. Um, so I'm not here, we're not here to, you know, we weren't talking about, oh, what is the praise for psychiatry? We were talking about what are the issues within the system, the abuses that hopefully the new law can address, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And then I also want to address, you know, Dr. Oyekomi's statement where she said, you are not an expert, it's better off that you don't speak on it. Mm -hmm. I'd like to correct it by letting you know that indeed I am an expert. Now, I am an expert because I am a person who has lived experience of mental health conditions. I currently live with mental health conditions. I have used the different levels of mental health facilities and whether it is public, whether it is private, you know, or otherwise. Um, you might be an expert in terms of the medical aspect. I am an expert by experience. However, I want to really draw on, because it's not a statement that is exclusive hmm. to doctor. It is a statement that is very, very popular within the medical field when it comes to people with mental health conditions mm -hmm. and psychosocial disabilities. Okay. But the very fact is that it is very implicit, it is very subtle. Even when you say that you are co-creating or you are making decisions in a collaborative or participative way mm -hmm. with your clients, what you're really doing is that you feel like you have the power and it's almost a very implicit, are you going to tell me my job mm. type of thing, mm. right? Mm. And that is the absolute perfect environment where abuses take place, mm. where you believe that if I am the one that is trying to do this, then you must listen to me. Mm. And that is why certain things about the human rights perspective are very, very important mm. because it removes, it shifts and spreads and shares the power that has previously been held with magistrates and medical practitioners mm -hmm. and it puts redistributes that power back into the hands of people with mental health conditions to be able to have a say and things like that. I'm not saying they've not always had a say. Mm -hmm. I'm saying that abuses have happened so much so that people with mental health conditions have been invalidated like that statement actually suggests. Mm. So yes indeed I am an expert. I do have equal say in how mental health is or how I am a recipient in terms of mental health. Um, care mm -hmm. or and anybody who has a mental health condition should not be invalidated on the basis of oh you're not an expert so you do not have what to say mm. we do have what to say and there is the entire tenet 
globally with regards to the human rights movement, with regards to people with psychosocial disabilities and all other disabilities, which is nothing about us without us. We do not take decisions, we do not have conversations, we do not create policies or move laws, either from conception to implementation or monitoring or evaluation, mm -hmm. without us actually championing it, robustly being consulted and having meaningful participation. I'm glad that Dr. mentioned, oh, Nigeria is always going to catch up, because indeed Nigeria is always going to catch up. The human rights angle to many of these things are yet to really, we're yet to really catch up, but they are happening. They are happening in Europe in particular. You know, uh, many countries are catching up to the fact that, you know, um, psychiatrists are being sued more. Worldwide, we're not having worldwide um, national networks of users and survivors of psychiatry, because mm. we cannot, let us not be deliberately obtuse of the fact that there have been significant abuse, and perhaps psychiatrists like many other uh, unlike many other medical practitioners have wielded power historically more than any other uh, person within the field. Mm. And so it is the right environment. I'm not saying everybody is bad, but I'm saying that there is an actual problem that we need to begin to solve. Mm. So most of them don't know where the journey started with regards to community-based support and all of that. When we, that was a statement that I got from doctor as well. Mm -hmm. When we started this journey, when we, people with mental health conditions and psychosocial disabilities, were... Be we're now becoming very influential in this journey in 20, from 2018. Mm. There were so many things that were not in the deal that I contested in 2020. So let's not make it seem like, oh, oh my gosh, psychiatrists have been doing this. Oh my gosh, it's a win for psychiatry. Fantastic. It is a collaborative effort. But please do not erase the efforts of people that have mental health conditions and psychosocial disabilities who mobilize, whether on social media or in national assembly and with Senate and, you know, allies in the Senate Committee on Disability, the House Committee on Human Rights, the National Human Rights Com um, Commission, the National Commission for Persons with Disabilities, even the Ministry of Health and International Development Organizations like WHO, CDM, Human Rights Watch and the likes. So please do not erase our effort because that was definitely one thing that was very different about this run towards the bill, that we were robustly included and consulted in getting this bill to the point. And if you would permit me, Sandra, mm -hmm. uh, perhaps, you know, if there is time, I would like to read, even after the show, mm -hmm. some of the survivors of psychiatry actually sending me DMs of their own stories. It is not, I don't, I mean, I get it. Everywhere in the world, psychiatrists tend to be very defensive about, you know, the abuses that take place. And mm -hmm. I can imagine that it is very sensitive because maybe a, a couple of them or a fraction of them are doing very fantastic work. Mm -hmm. And then others are doing work that is, that paints the entire image. Mm -hmm. Nobody's trying to paint psychiatry bad. I'm not trying to paint psychiatry bad. Psychiatrists have done that all by themselves hmm. because you have people, and we documented this, and you can Google it, the work that we did together with Zico Park um, a while ago where we documented lived experiences. Mm -hmm. We had people coming to us and telling us stories um, happening in Lasso, I'll name the hospital, Lasso, I mean, a kind of teaching hospital, um, Luz, you know, hospitals like that. And you had issues where they were chained to the bed, you know, they would get all these bouncers there to open their legs wide, strip them of their pants and underwears and things like that. Are you kidding me? I would, we really want to say that these things don't happen, that psychiatrists and family members don't come together to ensure that people are detained. There was a lady who was detained for two years. She lost a lot of money. And every time she tried to contest it, they don't say, oh, no, 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 she's a mad person. She has this affective you know, um, disorder. And so they shouldn't listen to her. Until one day, there was a different doctor that actually said, oh, my gosh, it seems like what you're saying is actually correct. When they realized that the family was actually taking all her money and she lost about 22 million and all of those things, we hear these horrible stories. We document them. We see them in photojournalism. So why do we want to act like it doesn't happen? Okay. How are, I, 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 I want to... Okay, how, how are, I, I want to give Dr. Yakomi a chance to respond. Dr. Yakomi? Yeah, thank you, um, Sandra. Um, you see, she's talking as if, you know, I, I wish she would really, really give me, you know, the names of these hospitals where this abuse she did. She did. Place. She said, she Lassu, just mentioned that somebody Lassu, said. Lassu, yes, yeah, that's um, what they, they No, she said, I, it, I, she I, said I, it's I, documented. I, I, Excuse I, me, I, please, Awa. I mean, let me hold, on, hold, speak hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, ladies, hold on. Okay. So, so let me hear one at a time. So, yeah. like I was saying to you, Doctor Yakomi, yes, yes. she mentioned Lasu, yes. okay. she mentioned okay. Luth, fine. she mentioned Amino Kano, Kano teaching, teaching hospital. Teaching hospital. Okay, fine. Mm -hmm. You see, she mentioned just two things. She said, "Oh, involuntary admissions and chaining of patients to bed." Mm. You see, involuntary admission still exists even in the new new law. Now, there is a peculiarity with mental illnesses. Most of the time, when patients are mentally ill, they 
cannot, they might not be able to make the right judgment. So sometimes patients are forced into admissions, you know, by their relatives. And sometimes because the patients don't want to come to the hospital voluntarily. So you might even see a patient brought to the hospital, you know, shackled, you know. And then even in the hospital, sometimes when the patient is aggressive, you know, we, we need to restrain patients sometimes. And now what we use, we use chemical restraints. There's, yes, they use chains in the past. And even in advanced countries, they use straight jackets. They use seclusion rooms. You know, it might, it might look, oh, it might look um, one kind that, oh, why would you put somebody in a straight jacket? Why, why, why would you put, put somebody in a secluded room? But that is what the patient needs. Just like is, that, is that global best practice? As at now, mm -hmm. as at now, mm -hmm. because of advances in psychopharmacology, mm -hmm. now we use chemical restraints. Okay. Yes. Now, you, 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 you know, it, one might say, oh, because you are going for a surgery, the surgeon has to cut you. Mm -hmm. Cutting is not, is not something that is palatable, but it has to be done. So, you see, when we I, talk I, I about... Don't, I don't know if they're the same thing, though. Surgery and, um, you know, chaining people and yes, starving but, but people. Yes, I'm, I'm just saying that, you know, sometimes some, some procedures might look, you know, like, um, oh, it's not, it's not um, right. Humane. And, yes. And then, because you I know, think that was her sticking point, the yes. humane. And then, you see... She, she she failed to to really really say what the real picture is a lot of abuses that occur um happen in these traditional homes and with people who call themselves experts and i i'm glad that she said that she's an expert by experience um sandra you've had malaria does it make you an expert of malaria you are a female you have all the female anatomical structures in your body does it make you a gynecologist no so you see i like mental health ent enthusiasts i like activists but don't go above your pay grade you see we have had a lot of abuses from these people because a lot of so-called therapists would misdiagnose patients. They would tell them, oh, you don't need medication. Oh, don't go to the psychiatrist. Oh, they would say you are mad. It's like mental illnesses is not all about madness. And we have different grades. There are some that we might not even give you any medication. It might be just psychotherapy. So what I'm saying is that, see, you, we, let us come together and work together. Nobody is saying, oh, um, what you are doing is wrong. We want a lot of education. We want a lot of advocacy, but please don't confuse people. The last time she said that, oh, there is nobody that has gone to the psychiatric hospital that had a, uh, a good experience. That is not true. That is not true. Because if people hear that, they wouldn't want to come for treatment. Mm -hmm. And that would further discrimination and stigmatization. And that is not what we want. Now, you mentioned sterilization. Sterilization was done in the past. In the past, when, when the knowledge... How long ago? Um, like decades ago. Okay. Yes. The last one was done in the U.S., I think in the 1960s or in so. In Nigeria? No, 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 no. In Nigeria, I am not aware of any sterilization. No way. Okay. Yeah. So, why, so why did this law ban it? Uh, because it's a, it's a global practice. Okay. You know, there are some things that they do, you know, that they've done. For example, trepanation, you know, like um, drilling a hole into the patient's skull was at a time done. Mm -hmm. We have never done that in Nigeria. Okay. You know, so so um, so sterilization was done at that time. You know, because they thought that okay, oh, um, um, this patient because sometimes they have poor judgment, so mm -hmm. that they will not get pregnant, mm -hmm. and then you will have the the burden of taking care of of these children. You know that the ch these children might be deprived of motherly care. Blah blah blah. You know, so they did it at that time, but they have since stopped it. And then he, 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 he when 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 she talked the last time, she said. ECT, she, she talked about it and she said that, oh, she doesn't even know why it's still done in Nigeria. Now, let me let me just... She say, also said it happens all over the world. Yeah, she just mentioned it today. No, no, no she did anyway, last week as well. Uh, well, now, ECT, you know, um, and Sandra, before I even go there, mm. I was listening to you a few days ago and then you talked about your experience with MRI mm. that you wanted to hear and then when you saw the cubicle and then you were afraid. Mm -hmm. You know, 10 years down the line, there might be a new technology that will now say, oh, we are not going to use that again because of pa uh, patients who are claustrophobic. There currently and then, is. Yes. They and, then, and, then, and then some people will say, ah, ah, how would you put somebody in a box that looks like a coffin? But that is the available technology at that time. So, you know, I don't want people just to rubbish the efforts of people in the past. And it, is, it did not only happen in the field of psychiatry. In fact, um, um, some time ago, they were even given... A patient's mercury, 
because it was thought that oh, mercury would cause some would, would, would heal some diseases. Mm -hmm. So there were practices in different areas of medicine. Mm -hmm. And then you know, the most abuses that take place in Nigeria, like I have said, is with these traditional homes and these so-called therapies that misdiagnose, that don't allow patients to come for treatment mm -hmm. um, 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 on time. You know, so you see... The fact that maybe you you um, somebody you you read something online, somebody wrote an article about being abused or being forced into a psychiatric treatment, you cannot generalize. You okay. can't generalize. So I am still saying that mm. the emphasis should be on these areas. And this is what and she talked about community treatment. They did not start community treatment, and I have that was why I started with it that the the current delivery mm -hmm. of healthcare generally mm -hmm. is based on that public health model, mm. which 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 recognizes that. The cause of health and illness is not only one single factor, it is multifactorial, including psychosocial factors. And that is where the community participation and community integration and everything in the community comes in. So they didn't start it at all. I can okay. say it categorically, and she can go back to history and, and, and read that. So, how, how, like I have on. said, or Dr. please, Anthony, you allowed her to speak for over yeah, 10 I, I, minutes. I allowed you to speak for yes, over 10 minutes I as well. I have only spoken for five minutes. No, Sandra. but you started the show and you <laughs> spoke until break time. <laughs> <laughs> so let me come back to Hawa. Hawa, you've heard uh, Dr. Yakomi. Do you have extra thoughts to share? To be very fair, I think Dr. Yakomi is making my point pretty much, honestly speaking. I feel like she's reiterating my point. I'm not saying that. First off, I did not. Um, first off, I did not say that we originated community care at all. So, Dr. Yakomi, please, I beg you, if you can please listen to me and please just hear only what I say. Um, that would be very, very helpful. I did not say we started community care. The emphasis I was making was that when we contested a deal in 2020, mm. there were certain parts of the deal that are currently there right now that were not there before. And it was because of the human rights approach and the people that advocated for the human rights approach mm. that really pushed it. You can go and look at the version that was contested in 2020 and look at the difference between that version and the last clean copy that passed the House of Reps to before it got to the president. Mm. And you would see the difference. Now, the other thing is that, you know, Dr. Ekomi said, oh, it didn't only happen in psychiatry. For God's sake, we're not talking about any other aspect of medicine here. We're talking about psychiatry, so I see no reason why we have to go any other place. Mm. ECT, once again, I'm not talking about something that I read off the internet. I did not say that, you know, um, ECT, I did mention explicitly in the last episode, and Dr. Ekomi might, might want to revisit, you know, the video, I believe, is on YouTube where I did talk about, you know, that it happens in other countries and things like that. Mm. I was particularly talking about informed consent with regards to ECT and the cases that we documented with regards So, again, I'm not talking about third-party research. I'm talking about research that we have carried out. You know, there's this sense of, oh, she's just talking like, she's just talking like. And it's a very demeaning stance, and it's a stance that psychiatrists tend to take. You know, when you talk about, oh, okay, imagine you comparing somebody who lives with a mental health condition with somebody who lives with malaria. How many times do you ever have to change somebody that lives with malaria? How many times do you ever have to bundle them up from their homes? How many times do you ever put, have to put them into straight jackets? How many times do people with malaria have to live with malaria for 10 and 20 years of their life? So what, I mean, I don't see the parallels at all. So you cannot tell me, oh, don't go beyond your pay grade. Again, this, that's what I'm saying, you're making my point, where you are telling people who live with mental health conditions, who generally have to, on some level, have to live with these conditions perhaps most or all their life. And you're telling them, oh, wait, don't go above your pay grade. Don't tell me how to do my work. Nobody's telling you how to do your work. We're just saying, historically, certain things that have happened where people with mental health conditions have been silenced or have not had their voices heard, they have not been validated, or they have not gotten for um, proper informed consent and things like that. And we're saying that the shift here is that part of that power is being redistributed so that there is a more collaborative approach that still centers people with mental health conditions. Again, that's why I said that Dr. Ekomi is making my point because nobody is saying, if anything, you're the one that's making it look like, oh, the power is in the hands of psychiatrists. I haven't said that. Should be. I'm actually saying okay. that. I haven't I'm said actually that. making the point that everybody should do that. There is nothing that you've said that has actually debunked anything I said. Okay. You know, perhaps my own okay. look. In fact, okay, okay. okay. Like, okay. Oh, oh, let, let's move the conversation off. forward because you, you both have fundamentally different uh, views about, um, about this. So let's move the conversation forward. Is there room for the human rights approach that Hawa is speaking about with uh, mental health care delivery in Nigeria? 
right? Because like she said, in other parts of the country, of the world, they're beginning to um, move away from some of the cruder practices. Is there room in Nigeria? Does the, does the this new law help to um, um, uh, create facilitate yes this. facilitate a human rights based approach? Exactly, Sandra. And I said that this is what we have been doing and this is what we have been advocating for years. For years. Really. You know. Um, I think I got me wrong. I, you see, one of the best ways that we even like is, you know, to facilitate patients' education so that people would understand what we are talking about mental health mm. is that we like it when people who have experienced mental health conditions, when they talk to people, mm. because it makes it more real. Mm. So we are not excluding patients. We like it when patients can even come forward and say, see, I have experienced this and I received treatment. And it doesn't need to define your life. Mm. It doesn't mean that you cannot make um, 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 good out of your life. It doesn't mean that that is the end of your your life mm. so we don't we don't you see our patients are our first first priority okay. so we don't we don't we don't push patients outside so okay. that is not correct okay. so if you because if you, you listen had, to the show excuse me you, you know had, that because you listen to the show you know that we're running out of time yes you know uh -huh. so because of that i want us to end the show um today on a uh, let's 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 leave the audience with something right I want I want us to talk about what the um, alternatives currently are that you know um, improves, expands, enable initiatives to properly care for the mentally ill. So I've got like one minute. Okay. Before we take a break. Okay, it's important that people educate themselves, that people understand that when we say mental, we don't mean madness. Mm -hmm. Mental just refers to the mind. It is like every other aspect of. Um, uh, of um, medicine. Mm. Um, mental illnesses are like hypertension, they are like um, diabetes, they don't need to define your life and there are treatments that are available but I want people to go to the right places and people that are activists, people that educate people, please don't discourage people from going to the right places. Don't say that, oh, um, if you go here they are going to be badly treated. I want us collectively to focus on those areas, on those traditional homes, on those therapists that don't do the right thing. Okay. That is what I want us to do. And it's how a collaborative I, thing. How I, I've got, only the doctors how I've got 30 it. seconds. 30 seconds and then Thank we so have much, to go. Um, yeah. Absolutely. I'll just say this. To be honest, um, I have not disputed the fact that there is quality mental health care out there. There is Thank quality you. mental health care out there. <laughs> I am a person with a mental health condition. I receive care. Yeah. Um, that is not what the conversation was about. So that is why we did not go into that. Mm -hmm. So indeed, there is quality mental health care there. My organization, we run a 24-7 toll-free mental health, um, health, um, mental health helpline that is run by therapists and counselors. And if anybody's out there and they need a first point of contact, 0800-800-2000. And it's toll free, it's 24 7, 0800 800 2000. All and right. if you have lived experience, I need you to know that you are equal in the process of your care. Thank you. Wake up, sleepy head, it's girls' day out. Ugh. Fine. What's the plan for today? Okay. So we have a 9 a.m. hair and nail appointment at the salon. At 3 p.m., we're going to watch the new superhero movie, have drinks with Emma 